that in December 2nd, 2023, there was an actual fucking hole in the sun. Fuck does that mean? A hole in the sun? Literally, a hole in the fucking sun. Like, how does that happen? It was the size of 60 Earths. Okay, so it reached okay. the maximum width of 497,000 miles within 24 hours of, of first rupturing. So what caused the hole in the sun, first of all? So, all right, I'll get to that. It's First off, it's called a coronal hole. And that is, uh, that's something that can spark a geometric storm with solar radiation that can temporarily disable radio communication here on Earth, right? So it's like equivalent to an EMP? Yeah, but from the sun. And so it, what was crazy about this, when I first heard about it, I was like, what the fuck is the world ending? Like, are we going to die? Turns out that this actually happens like every solar spin that we fucking make. Like, it happens regularly. Um, I guess this one happened a little earlier than normal, but most of them last about 27 days on average of this hole being in the fucking sun. Now, a coronal hole, it occurs when the magnetic fields that hold the sun in place suddenly open up, causing the contents of the sun, sun's upper surface to stream away from it and form a uh, solar winds. But I never knew that. So, like, if, like hearing it the first time, I was like, that oh, shit don't make sense. Like, we gonna, we gonna fucking die? Like, uh, That's what I was thinking. I didn't know that this was something that happens on a regular basis. Like, it happens every few months. Just by you saying this shit, I was scared. Because I was like, wait a minute. I ain't accomplished what the fuck I'm supposed to be accomplishing yet. We can't die yet. The world can't end yet. I and, still got shit to do. And it, and it made me wonder. I was like, well, shit, if it happened, like, earlier than normal, does that mean it's going to happen with more regularity now? And does that mean it's going to pose more problems? Like, what are the ramifications of it continuing to happen at this rate? Are we fucked? Like, but, is like, are we fucked? Is the sun going to just burn us the fuck up? Like, what, right. what's but going on? But little did we know this is kind of a normal occurrence. Yeah. Wow. And that's what fucking like threw me for a loop, bro. That, I was that, like, that shows what? like what little we know about our planet and the shit around it. We don't know shit. But to open up to that size, also, yeah. Like I don't, I didn't. Like, look I don't up. even know how big our planet is, but I know it ain't small. Well, if there's a hole in the sun, think about the sun, and if it had a hole in it that was as big as sixty Earths. That's a lot. I mean, that's still a big gaping fucking hole, like almost 500,000 miles. Yeah, it's like 20 hours to fly fucking... across to the other side of the world. Yeah. So, And it's... it would be a lot bigger for you flat earthers because, <laughs> because you just got long fucking the earth planes of distance. Flat, guys, the earth <laughs> is across. just flat. So, it's not round. Yeah, earth, the no. earth is fucking round. You guys need also. to put that peyote down. What the fuck is going on with you? Or share. And subscribe <laughs> while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid ass. Oh, man. But yeah, yeah so like when, yeah, when I first heard that, I was like, mm, interesting. That is some fucking awkward shit, and I did not know that. But now that I know that, I'm going to be a little more uh, uh, conscious in looking into it because, you man. Know, you know what I always I wanted? Like that. I always wanted a, 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 like, like my dream ideal home, my master bedroom would have a balcony. And I would have a telescope on it where I could just go out at night, smoke a cigar, sip on a drink, and look at the stars. I've had I've had some telescopes in my time growing up. I've never had one. I've always wanted one though. It's but like, one of those it's always been one of those store bought ones where like, yeah, you could zoom in and you could look at the moon and yeah. stuff like that. It's not like a high I never paid money for like a high powered fucking fancy one like some people go out and get. But I mean it. There's a whole fucking universe out there that we don't yeah. know much about. So I yeah, I don't blame you for wanting to see that. That's yeah. kind of interesting. I mean, because most at. of the stars we see are just not stars. Like they, they may be planets. Yeah, like, no, you just oh, don't know. Like So fun fact. Some the, at the rate of the the light travels, some of what we think are stars are actually not even existent anymore. They're the, the light that is still traveling. So they already space. have exploded. Yeah. But the light is still traveling to us. So there are certain stars in the sky that we look at that 
aren't even in existence anymore. We are just seeing the light traveling. You know what's crazy is like being a trucker and when I go like across country and I'm in those areas where it's dark as fuck, I see so many shooting stars, bro. Oh, yeah. You oh, know? yeah. I take a risk. The, fur- I, the further I, you're away from cities and the city lights, yeah. which dim it for us to be able to see the skies, the more you get to see. And I take a risk. I close my eyes for a few seconds and I pray to the Lord and I make a wish. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> yeah. No, not even that. I, you know, I just, you know, make a wish that, you know, my family's taken care of, you know, my dreams and shit come true and the things I'm working towards become a reality and not just a, a dream, you know? So, yeah. Enough about that. What you got? I know you had yeah, some so. stuff you wanted to talk about too. So we talked about the sun mm-hmm. and it's whole. And I want to talk about this hole that's being pinned in our fucking pocket. By the insurance companies. Mm. Do you know that insurance insurance companies have gone up here in Nevada, primarily Las Vegas area, like 30% just this last year? I thought, I thought you said uh, 36%. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. 36% it went up? 36%, bro. Ridiculous. So in 2022, full coverage for a vehicle was about 1771. Right? That's 2022. Not right. that long ago. And in 2023, it was $2,014. And for 2024, it's $2,543. That's a big jump. That's a $500 difference. Right. Right. And then it's like, what the fuck and why the fuck? Because I know most people out there probably haven't gotten into an accident in a long time. But, you know, so... For someone like me who hasn't gotten into an accident in a long time, I would want to know, why are you raising my rate? And from the insurance companies, they're saying it's due to population growth. So within the last 12 months, 60,000 more people have moved here to the Vegas Valley. To me, to me, that's bullshit, though. You shouldn't be allowed to punish us just to fatten your pockets. And I gave you an example before we started recording. So this happened maybe about three or four years ago where I have literally had like State Farm for well over a decade, right? Like almost 15 years I've had State Farm's insurance for home, whether it be renters or homeowners and the car, right? Yeah. Some vehicle flicks a rock onto a fucking... Onto my uh, windshield, cracks the windshield. Pause. For those of you who don't know, Vegas should be called Rock City because we got fucking rocks. And our national flower should be a construction cone. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fucking everywhere. Yeah. So So this this truck flicks a rock up, hits my windshield, cracks it. Yep. That happened to me too. Right. They still wanted to charge me a five hundred dollar deductible to to change a windshield that would have cost less than $500 to do. Like why? Yeah. Why are you still thinking that it's okay, that it's all right to charge me for something that it was not only beyond my control, right? I don't have control on what a fucking truck in front of me flips up. You're going 65, 70 miles per hour on the highway and a rock is flicked up. You can't see that shit. Yeah. And what am I going to do? It's about as big as a fucking dime. It's about as big as a dime. You don't see it. And all you hear is, and you see a chip on your windshield. Yep. That's how it starts. You hear a loud pop, and it's a crack, and then it just it goes spreads from there. from there. Yeah. And I still get charged, off, and they still wanted to charge me a $500 deductible. So I ended up paying $190 to someone else to get it replaced. So you didn't do the deductible? I you didn't just do the decided, deductible. Okay, I'm just going to go with on the outside of my insurance and go yeah. and get my windshield fix. Yep. And you know the fucked up part about the insurance is and I'm sure most of you out there can relate. You pay your insurance every month. Let's just give it a basic number like 250 full coverage. You pay 250 a month for 10 years. Do the math. That's a lot of money, right? Then you have an incident like JD is speaking about where your windshield's chipped and you want to go through your insurance because you're paying them to fix it. Then they still want to charge you the five hundred dollar deductible. It's like, haven't I fucking paid tenfold over the last ten years? And especially with no, like 
with no incidents. And especially in our, our situation, in 15 years, we've only ever filed one claim See? because of a busted pipe that happened in our first home that we owned. So 15 years, you've paid them for 15 years, month in, month out, yep. consistently. You file one claim. They still want to charge you your deductible. And then after you pay the deductible and get the claim resolved, your insurance is going to go up every month for at least two years. Who's really paying to fix the issue? You are. They're paying nothing out of pocket because you paid them over all these months and they're just pocketing that money. And then when you have an issue, they charge you to fix the issue, which is why your interest rate, or not your interest rate, but your insurance rate goes up for two years. Yeah. That's so you could cover the damage. And sometimes it's not even really covering it because a windshield, what does a windshield cost? 500 bucks, 600 bucks? No, like, like I said, I paid somebody outside 190 for the windshield. Right. And then I think I paid them like uh, 80 bucks to do the replacement job. So 190, 80 bucks. 260, 270, let's just say 300. 300. Let's just say 300 flat out. But if you would have went through your insurance, you would have to pay them $500 for, for the deductible. deductible. Plus, they raise your 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 well, yeah. insurance rate for 3 years by 60, 70, 80 bucks a month. Yep. What are they paying out of pocket to fix anything? They're not paying anything. It's a scam. We're paying. Insurance is a fucking scam, and I'm sick of it. You know what? Just for that, fuck you, State Farm. I'm going to leave your ass. I'm going to yeah. fucking find somebody else. But they're all fucking like that. I dude. know, but fuck that. I'd rather, like... Dude, I've called I'm, Allstate, and I fucking talk shit to them because they raised my rate, and they tell me the reason why they're raising my rate is because of the accidents in the area, which is in the city. Doesn't affect I, me. And I said, I didn't have an accident. They said, oh, no, well, based on how many accidents happen in the city, and how many payouts we have to do, it changes the rate of everybody. And I'm thinking, how the fuck is that fair? This is where I think government needs to step in and start regulating that because it's we're required by law to have auto insurance, right? So I think that, okay, if we're required to have auto insurance, there should still at least be some sort of stipulation, some sort of guidelines where auto insurance is not allowed to take advantage of that and start fucking us in the ass Yeah, because that is basically what insurance companies are doing now because what you've just said right now, is a prime example of you getting punished for something you did not do wrong. And I'm getting punished for it and everybody else who's driving for it. And I'm, I'm curious to see in other well-populated cities if this rate has also gone up. Because you said like just here in Nevada, it went up 36%, yeah. right? So from so what I know. I'm curious to see what other states have gone up as it's well. It's gone up because Vegas, I don't know if you know, but Vegas averages 55 accidents per day. Hmm. And I mean, don't get me wrong. All of us can agree. That's a lot of accidents in a day. Well, for, and for, for this for, size for a, city, yeah, for a small town, you know, we're not small, but you know, yeah, we're fucking. We're small, not a big bro. city compared to some other cities. We're either. small, bro. I could get through the whole fucking Clark County in under an hour, damn near. I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, just give me a Ferrari. <laughs> Give me a Ferrari and I'll be freeway. <laughs> you know, 2 a.m. in the morning on a fucking Sunday, you know? No, but. An HBS so, court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but all jokes aside. So we average 55 accidents per day as a city. So don't get me wrong. That does sound like a lot. But of those 55 accidents per day, I can attest that this motherfucker right here, me, I ain't had an accident in eight years. So why the fuck my rate going up? Right. Y'all taking free money from me every month. So why you need to increase? You know, they say that's because we've averaged 60,000 people moving here in a year. But I mean, you know, in Matt, a year or two year to date in, in one year. Between uh, 2022 and 2023, we've had 60,000 more people move here, right? But you know math like I know math, right? So if 60,000 people move here and then you're charging them what you're charging me, why you need to increase? It, that's just greed. That, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, and that's because why I'm saying like you're the making government more needs money to because it. there's more people. 
But why do you need to increase what you're charging the people? You're making more because there is more. So what the fuck does it make sense? I need to charge more because there's more. What? Make it make sense. Yeah. You're yeah. making more off rip because more people are here. So that's why I feel like insurance is a fucking scam. I hear you. Know? I hear you. Yeah. And so for the for the uh those of you, forgive me, I'm drunk a little bit and I got braces now, so I got like a little lisp when I talk. Drunk only a little bit? Yeah, just a little bit. Not a lot of it, a little bit, a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know? Whatever. I'm under point zero eight. Fuck off. <laughs> Even though I'm going to Uber home. The top, um, what is this? Top four intersections that has the most accidents in the valley is um, one of them is Sahara and Sand Hill. You know what? Doesn't even fucking matter. Why don't matter? Why don't matter? Because there's other cities that also have volatile Fucking yeah. intersections as well. And we're not speaking just to people in Vegas. So I'm not worried about that, man. Well, people who live here, they already know. Right. They already know which intersections are busy as fuck and always have accidents. But they, I, so bet, I bet you they don't. Them. I bet you they don't. I bet you they do. What, what else you got for? What do you think the number one intersection is in town? Uh, I would Take a guess. say like Sahara and you're Sand Hill. In, you're, in law, you're in fucking law enforcement. So Take a guess. Sahara and Sand Hill is pretty It's not number prone. one. It is accident prone, but it's not number one. Uh, what do you La- think the number one intersection is? Las Vegas Boulevard and Flamingo. Close? Is it close? Close. Was Real it close. Tr- was it Trop? No. So you said Sahara and Sand Hill. That's in the top. Ooh, Sahara and uh, Las Vegas Boulevard has always got accidents too. So, so Sahara and Sand Hill is in the top four. Okay. Las Vegas and Flamingo is in the top four. Flamingo and Decatur is in the top four. But the number one intersection is Las Vegas Boulevard and Warm Springs where the South Outlets are. So if you're out there, you go to the South Outlets a lot. If you're even visiting town and you know where this, this intersection is, just beware. Make sure you look left, right, left before you proceed. Yeah. Put your hand over the fucking horn and get ready to honk because motherfucker's crazy. <laughs> and that's really, that's like around the corner from the uh, airport rental car, which is, I mean, we have people who travel all over the world here. So, I mean, put two and two together. So, yeah, moving on from that. Let's talk about last weekend, bro. It was the Super Bowl last weekend. I don't know about you, but the Super Bowl was here in Las Vegas. And from for well, me being here in Las Vegas, I'm glad that shit over with. By the time you guys watch this, it'll be more than just a week old. Because yeah, yeah. this is recorded in advance. But, yeah. Fuck that Super Bowl, man. Everybody knows I'm a 49er fan and we got robbed. You a 49er fan? You've already known that. Shut up. I know. Shut I'm just saying ass. it for the fans so they can feel it. Feel the pain with you. You a 49er fan? What the fuck happened? You know, for the first couple of days, I didn't want to sit here and like get on. Like I, I avoided all social media. I didn't want to get on and talk about it because anything I would have said, it would have just sounded like a, an excuse and I didn't want to come off like that. So. I just let it happen. It is what it is. Um, the 49ers should have won that game. There were a, a plethora of holding calls for a team that was in the top five for holding all season and to have their third Super Bowl where they have zero holding calls. That's not a coincidence. That yeah. is brought to you by your local NFL aficionado who fucking says this is the team that we want to win. And it didn't matter what the 49ers did. They were going to be fucking ass raped so when you, it was all said and done. So you do agree that there was a handful of calls. And I mean, not just calls, but game changing calls that were missed there's by no, the official. When you go back and you watch the video, there's a uh, watch the replay of the game. There's no coincidence that all of the major glaring third downs that were needed in that game the 49ers got held on third and it wasn't called right and i'm not saying that it was all on the refs not calling what they should have there was even a video of like when trent williams got uh, called for a holding early in the game 
that the refs uh didn't call or called it on him and then you see Kyle Shanahan actually talking to one of the refs saying hey I know our guy did this but they've been doing that all game and you guys need to start calling it the same way and never fucking happened never plain and simple 49ers didn't take advantage of a lot of the opportunities that were gifted to them right like the Chiefs fumbled the ball five times and were only able to recover one fumble if they recover two or three of those fumbles it might be game changing um, there is a, a one play where on a first and 10, Pat Mahomes runs for two yards. And instead of it being a second and eight, they made it first and 10 again. And really? they tried to say there was a error on the line judge and that it wasn't called right. Even though you could clearly see the play before that. So Travis they- Kelsey catching the ball for like 11 yards. So there's no way in hell that they missed that, that the whole it was a. Uh, it was. Right. He it was wasn't short. like inches. Yeah, no, no, like, no. Uh, it was. You're talking about. You had to have at least have been a yard and a half to two yards off. So within three plays, they gave you guys a first down. They gave twice. them. They gave them a first down twice. Well, yeah, free, they gave them a free first down, basically. Yeah. Wow. So. Yes, so, the refs made some shit, and it, when the more and more I watch it, man, and I don't want to be one of those guys that believes in like conspiracy I mean, and saying you that already the know where I stand. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy that, that guy. believes that the fucking NFL is like rigged and shit. But guy, when man. you see stuff like this happen, it's like, I'm that guy. how the fuck? Like, so I don't know. Because don't if know. you guys go back and watch the Niners game during the Super Bowl and the game before the Super Bowl, the, the, the um, title game, um, who'd you guys play for the title game? You played, the Lions. yeah, the Lions. You guys had a player number 30. I want to say he's maybe the middle linebacker. But there was a few plays where he was kind of sus. Where I felt like he wasn't running. He wasn't trying to make the tackle to make the play. And I'm thinking, why is this dude half-assing it? Like, this this is it. Especially yeah. for the, the one against the Lions. It was like, let's be eliminated right well, here. Well, that's one like, of our defensive, defensive ends. Uh, Chase Young was called out for his lack of effort on a play where uh, Jameer Gibbs runs in this touchdown and you just see him kind of like, and I, and I talked about this before with someone else where it just was a lack of effort and just also feeling like they were waiting for somebody else to make the play instead of having that intensity and that urgency to get to the ball where you want all 11 players trying to make a play. Instead, they were like, oh, they got it. Because I've seen the same thing from the same player in the Super Bowl. There was a play where Pat Mahomes ran the ball and 30 was there and he was kind of like not really giving it his all to tackle him. And I'm looking like, what is he doing? It don't look like he wants to fucking tackle him. So that's neither here or there, you know. All I know is it was frustrating. I do have a theory, though. What's that? If it is staged. The 49ers should win it next year. <laughs> think so? Well, think about it. All right, so Mr. Irrelevant gets the starting job, leads his team to the NFC Championship League uh, game, right. gets hurt, so they end up losing that game. Then the next year, this mis- same Mr. Irrelevant gets to the NFC Championship game, doesn't get hurt, wins it, then goes to the Super Bowl, loses. So if that Are pattern continues... you saying the, continues, next, the next step is winning yeah. it all? So if that pattern continues, like the then the next like, year okay. he should win it. But we'll see. Yeah. Well, from what I've read, the theory is that the Packers are going to win. Fuck that shit. And if the Packers win, I'm telling you right now, this shit is rigged. Because ain't no way a motherfucker come out with that prediction right now and they win. So, yeah. You know what Super the, Bowl the, uh, the, next year is in New Orleans, which is Superdome. That's pretty interesting. You know? The Packers did have a, uh, they do have the, what one of the youngest teams, I think, is what they were stating. Yeah. Uh, to make the playoffs this year. So if they grow and continue building, that they could be a formidable team yeah. for a good couple of years to come if they could manage to keep all these players together. So I'm not discounting the fact that they could uh, at least become a team that's contending every year. Right. Uh, same thing with the Lions, right? Because I don't think that uh, Dan Campbell is going to make the same mistakes in the pivotal points of games like he did this last year that cost them against my Niners also, right? Like he had plenty of times where they could have beaten my Niners and been on and moved on to the, to the Super Bowl. He cost them that. Uh, 
with some of his decisions. So it's also ironic that like in the overtime with the new overtime rules that happened, which I didn't know they did it. So I don't blame them for not knowing, but you know, shit happens is what it is, but maybe yeah. next year. So there's rumor that has it that you guys may get rid of Debo. Nah, that's what are your thoughts on that? Do you want that to happen or, or not? And what do you think they should do? I think it's funny when people talk about some of these rumors because we still have our quarterback on the cheapest contract he's ever going to be on, right? Especially if he plays another year the way he's played the first two. Right. He's um, still on his rookie, right? And then on top contract. of that, the way that we have structured contracts, we're actually coming into this next offseason being the top team as far as cap space available goes. So for them to say that, like, yeah, we're going to get rid of Debo, it, to me is just asinine because you see what dynamic that guy brings. You see the difference in the team. Yeah. Uh, how he, has a, he does bring a, it's a, a unique skill set. He does bring a certain type of like intensity. Yeah, that's needed. And well, not only that, but it's it's harder to game plan against us when you have a running back that could play wide receiver like Christian McCaffrey, and then you have a wide receiver that could play running back like Debo. Right. That's an extra dynamic that it's it, it tricks play it tricks teams. And it makes it harder to try and and, and game plan against. Dang. So, to me, I don't see him going anywhere. Um, I think the tricky part for the 49ers this year will be trying to find a way where we could pay Brandon Ayuk, who has blossomed and has improved every, sing, every single season since being in the league, to staying on this team as well. But with that, I uh, want to say thank you all for the, uh, the love, the comments. And as always, subscribe, share, and...